off screen tell us. Okay, so I, I'm <laughs> Teresa Martin. I teach biology at College of San Mateo, and we're going to be doing a demonstration on the vascular model. So um, if you can zoom in, we're going to start with the aorta, and uh, we'll look at um, the branches off of the aorta. So here we see the ascending aorta, okay, right here. And as it comes around, there's the arch of the aorta coming around. And then along the back, we see the descending aorta. Once the aorta crosses the level of the diaphragm, it then becomes called the abdominal aorta down along through here. So we're going to come back and we're going to look up here at the first three branches off of the aorta. And right here we see what's called the brachiocephalic trunk or the brachiocephalic artery. And this is going to split within just about an inch to form um, the right common carotid artery and the right subclavian artery. Now these two come directly off the aorta. This would be the left common carotid artery and this would be the left subclavian artery. So if we follow the left common carotid artery up, we see as it comes up here, it branches into these two branches. The external branch is called the external carotid artery, and this serves the scalp and head on the outside of the skull. And then this one here is called the internal carotid artery. It goes up through the carotid canal of the skull and serves the brain. Now if we come back to our two subclavian arteries, right here and here, the right and the left, what we see coming off of the subclavian artery are the two vertebral arteries. And these run in those transverse foramina of the cervical vertebrae and then penetrate into the skull at the foramen magnum. And at this point, they, in the skull, they form a single vessel here um, called bacillar artery. So bacillar artery runs along the pons and you can see it has branches and those branches serve um, the pons and the cerebellum region. Now this, this model doesn't show all of it but if you notice there's this little wire that connects between bacillar artery and the internal carotid artery and in fact if you look if the right side were here as well, it would form a complete circle of very small vessels called the Circle of Willis. And that Circle of Willis has, the, has um, arteries that head out to the cerebrum, so those vessels serve the cerebrum. So we have actually an anterior cerebral artery, a middle cerebral artery, and a posterior cerebral artery that all serve the cerebrum. Um, we, and we can, sh we can do a demonstration on the skull Shall we do that now? Okay. So, with this model, we see uh, bacillar artery is here. The um, two vertebral arteries coming up through the frame and magnum are represented by these pipe cleaners. Um, here are the vessels off of the bacillar artery that serve the pons and the cerebellum. Um, right here on either side, we see the two internal carotid arteries. And here, these small vessels collectively form what's called the Circle of Willis. This vessel coming off of the Circle of Willis is most likely representing the anterior cerebral artery, but there are also middle and posterior cerebral arteries as well. Okay. Good. Thank you. So, moving on then, we're going to look at this from an anterior perspective. And this is where the vessels get pretty um, small and in a compact space. So if we see this vessel right here um, coming off of the abdominal aorta, okay, this vessel is called the celiac trunk. The celiac trunk has, oh very good, the celiac trunk has three branches to it. This first branch coming off to the right is called the common hepatic artery. It's serving both um, the liver and the stomach. And the reason it's called the common hepatic is because it's going to branch. So we see deep in here the branch of this um, small wire here. 
and then this here that continues on up to the liver. So the one that continues on up to the liver right here is called, called the hepatic artery. And the one that branches off is called the right gastric artery. Now there's also a left gastric artery and that comes straight off of the celiac trunk and this is, has, been, has fallen away but it um, should be attached right here and so this would be the left gastric artery and the two form come together to form a loop, a gastric artery loop. So you have a right and a left gastric artery. Then lastly coming off the celiac trunk we have the splenic artery which comes out to this or organ, which is the spleen, right here. Okay, so um, we have um, two more vessels that serve the um, sort of the viscera of the abdomen. This one right here is called the superior mesenteric artery, serving kind of the upper intestines. And then this one down here is called the inferior mesenteric artery, which is serving more of the lower intestines. Um, the um, two vessels on either side of the aorta that are going to the kidneys, we see these would be called the left and the right renal arteries. Okay, so now moving down, here again is the abdominal aorta, and here we see it split to where it's going to serve our right and left sides. These would be the two common iliac arteries. So this would be the right common iliac artery, this would be the left common iliac artery. Those split again, okay, we'll get to that in a minute. Um, those split again into the, uh, here we see a, a longer extended version here of the internal iliac artery, and then over here would be the external iliac artery. So the internal iliac artery branches serve the um, pelvic intestines, pelvic viscera, um, so uh, urinary structures, reproductive structures, that sort of thing. And then here, the external iliac artery, as it comes uh, under or deep to the inguinal ligament, the name changes. So the name becomes, along the femur, the femoral artery. And then behind the knee, the name changes to what's called the popliteal artery. So popliteal artery is going to branch into this vessel here, which is called the anterior tibial artery, and this vessel here, which is the posterior tibial artery. The posterior tibial artery branches again and has two branches. One um, comes down to the, the sole of the foot. That's con um, continuing the posterior tibial artery. And this branch here, which would come along down the lateral side of the leg, um, is called the fibular or the perineal artery, serving those peroneal muscles, the peroneus longus brevis and tertius, or fibularis longus brevis and tertius. Um, so that pretty much, oh, we need to follow back out uh, the subclavian artery. So subclavian artery, the name changes again, as it goes through different body sections. I don't know, how, do you want to do it from the front here? Sure. So uh, when it comes into the axillary region, the name changes to axillary artery. Then when it gets to the arm, it becomes called the brachial artery. And then from the brachial artery is going to split into the radial artery here and the ulnar artery here. Remember that in anatomical position, the thumb is lateral and the palm is medial, um, and the pinky side is the ulnar side, the thumb side is um, the radial side, so radial and ulnar arteries. Any questions? No. <laughs> okay, great. We'll stop Thank there. Thank you.